Hey suckers, so I heard you're looking for a super awesome guide on how to play Dead by Daylight since you're new. Well, 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 as some of you may know, I'm a veteran Dead by Daylight player. With nearly 400 hours in the bag, I like to refer to myself as quite the connoisseur of this game. And after all I've experienced, I believe there is nobody more capable of telling you how not to play Dead by Daylight than me. So let's get into that. So step one, and the most important step of how not to play Dead by Daylight, is... Not purchasing it. Let me tell you folks, it's not worth it. Jump scares, toxicity, killers who will keep you up at night, and survivors who... who will also keep you up at night. All these stuff just aren't worth it. And, uh, oh wait, you've already bought the game. Okay, well, forget that step then. Step two, never do the tutorial. A tutorial is like a shell to a slug. You only need it if you're a coward. And are you a coward? Of course not. You're playing Dead by Daylight, which is a really scary game for brave people. Right? Besides, you don't have time to play a tutorial because you're too busy watching me play games on twitch.tv forward slash lolasaurusrex, which you can do most days at 6 p.m. Irish time. Step three. Right, so now you can set up your character. We will start with survivors first, then talk about killers in another video. There are many survivors to choose from to base your playstyle on personality around. We have quiet ones. <laughs> Loud ones. <laughs> Small ones. Tall ones. Handsome ones. And we have Nia. So what you're going to do is choose whoever. But make sure you put on the brightest clothes. Just slap on whatever makes you look like you're going to a really poorly set up rave. And bam! Now that you've got your fit ready, we can go to... Step 4! Step 4 is setting up your perks. At level 1 you can have 1 perk. At 5 you can use 2, 10 you can use 3, and 15 you can use 4. However, all of that is irrelevant because you're going to be running 0 perks. Why 0 perks, Lel? That makes no se- Listen, okay? And listen good, buddy. Perks are useless in this game. You don't need a perk if you've got yourself a strong crouch key, and strong will. So forget about that. However, with items, you can bring a flashlight. <laughs> Not to save your teammates, no. <laughs> or flash the killer, no, 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 no. Just to flick it at the killer so he knows how cool you really are. Step five is finally going into a game. As Survivor, you're going to be matched up with three other players who have done nothing to you and you have no idea who they are or what their life is like, which is why you're going to type in the chat, easy game nubs, stay out of my way. As well as switching from one character to another to ensure they know that you're playing and ready to reign supreme. Step 6. You're in the game. So what do we do, Lel? I'm glad you asked. So the goal of Dead by Daylight as Survivor is to complete five generators out of seven while running from the killer, to open the exit gates and, well, escape. Sounds easy. It is, but uh, you're not going to be doing that. You're going to go straight to a gen, which your teammates are at, and you have two choices here, actually. You can tap the generator to give them the slowest progression ever, or hold it. But the first skill check you get, you're going to want to click right before it touches the great skill check and run away as soon as you miss it. That'll show them that you're a wise decision maker. Step 7 This step is all about being chased by the killer. This is a big part of Dead by Daylight and will definitely happen to you. So what you're gonna want to do when the killer starts chasing you is find every single pallet on the map and drop it instantly and run. This will notify the killer on the huge balls you have and stun him mentally as he has zero idea what the hell you're doing. 
As well as this, a killer cannot vault pallets like you. So if you see a killer going to break a pallet, you're going to want to vault that pallet ASAP. It's do or die, baby. You can also vault windows, which if you do it while sprinting will notify the killer of where you are. So you can take him on easily, like a chat. While in a chase, there are other things you can do, like teabagging as soon as you drop a pallet to assert dominance, or flickering your little flashlight at the killer to again show them just how cool you are. Step 8 This is all about helping your teammates. Your teammates are going to get hooked and hurt, and you're going to have to be there to help them. This is where Parks really would have came into clutch, but <laughs> we don't do that around here. So, if you come across a survivor who's been hurt and is looking for a heal, you're going to want to again tap that heal button or miss every single skill check. It's survival of the fittest, not the funnest, okay? As well as that, if you are unhooking a teammate, you're gonna do it as soon as they get hooked and the killer is right there to down them again and get the kill ASAP. <laughs> Step 9. Before I get into this, I wanna say, you're doing fantastic so far. At this point, you should have angered all your teammates, as well as making the killer realize how much of an asshole you are. So far, you know how to loop the killer, do gens, help your teammates, and be the most outspoken player in the game. Now all that is left is to finish the game. There's two options to this. One, you can go to open the exit gates after completing the gens, but you're gonna wanna 99% that gate and just stand at the switch. Stand right there so no other teammates can open it, and it ensures the killer will still have a chance to bring the game back because you're just so generous. Once he gets a survivor or two, you can open it and leave immediately. Option two is awaiting your teammate's death and getting the hatch. Nothing shouts heroism more than awaiting your teammate's death to escape through the hatch. Step 10, and the final step. Congratulations, you finished your very first Dead by Daylight game successfully. Now all you have to do left is go in the after game chat and type GGEZXD and leave the lobby. And with that win, you'll get blood points, which of course you're not going to spend because, well, you don't need them. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the 10 easy steps on how not to play Dead by Daylight Survivor Edition. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot from it. It took some time figuring out the little details and gathering the information to truly make the best Dead by Daylight guide video. But nonetheless, here it is. That'll be it for me, but uh, I'll see you whenever.